Hey friends, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host. Uh, my good buddy, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. You too. It's uh, it's good to be on the other side. Uh, we are recording this uh, right before Thanksgiving, but you're going to hear it after Thanksgiving. And, and so it is officially the most wonderful time of the year now. Um, only Advent enthusiasts can get mad at you for listening to Christmas music. Um, but it's it's lights, it's colors, and it, it's it's joy. Like we, we kick off Thanksgiving with with this sort of idea of, of um, optimism. Um, that, that almost makes it harder to be a pessimist. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a pessimist. I don't know about you. Yeah. 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 No, I, the glass is always, uh, half empty for me <laughs> and, and probably cracked. I just haven't realized it yet. It's, it's yeah, all yeah. about to fall apart. I'm convinced of it. Um, it, it, I've always kind of struggled with this a little bit because like, for me, it's always easier to mark the things I don't have in the time of the year when everybody celebrates what they do. How do we, how do we start to, to process this? Like kicking off from Thanksgiving, all the things you're thankful for and, and moving through, you know, that the family celebrations and all this stuff. Talk to give me some, give me some hope. Well, you know, at this time of year, it just seems like every Thanksgiving, we're going to be actually, you know, as you mentioned, we're recording this here before Thanksgiving. So tomorrow we're going to head uh, to my fam- so my extended family uh, down in Bismarck, North Dakota. And and I, I, I know for a fact, somebody's going to say, what are you thankful for this last year? We get that every year, that question. And it, it's you can't not even that eat it's- until you're done. And you're like, man, I'm just going to come up with something. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it's not—it's not that it's a bad question. I mean, it's—it's—it's it's, it's a good reflective question. But then, I don't know about you, but then I kind of just—I'm like freeze. It's like, okay, what do I say? Okay, well, we, we go the easy way out, which is what? Yeah. You no, know, family, friends, food, um, shelter. You know, and you just go off these material possessions or these tangible things that we've been mm-hmm. given. So good things that we receive. Now, again. Sure. Not, I don't want to be some sort of Scrooge and say that we can't be thankful for that, which we probably should indeed be thankful for our daily bread. Um, however, to think about it from this perspective, uh, thinking about the the things that uh, we haven't received to be thankful for. Now, when I say the things mm-hmm. we haven't received, uh, I'm not necessarily taking about talking about good things. I'm talking about the bad things that we haven't received that we've been spared from. Uh, I think mm-hmm. way too often uh, we, we, we fail to neglect uh, we neglect uh, to understand all the things that could be happening to us. And as we were talking before we started, uh, before we clicked record on this, you know, like last night I went to bed and my house wasn't bombed. And he said, yeah, I'm a fan of that. that yeah. That's good, right? I mean, the very Send fact. Me for one more, please. <laughs> right. And so the very fact that, I mean, th- this whole idea that that society and not, not again, not trying to, to, to raise alarm or to stir the pot with being edgy by any means, but there's a thin line between order and chaos in this world. It's a very, very thin line. There's a very thin line between uh, a good order and anarchy. There's a thin line between uh, a culture of life and a culture of death. Uh, it's a very, very thin line. And that line can break. And when it breaks, uh, literally, quite literally, all hell can break loose. And uh, societies and uh, order and all that can break down really, really fast. And so I guess my point is that there's so much we can be thankful for that, that we're being spared of right in this moment. The very fact that you and I are talking about biblical things and we talk about Jesus and we get to put it on this mechanism of the Internet and put it on social media. And the very fact that your 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 office is not being stormed by police officers being arrested or I'm not. I was able to get in the church and I didn't have to cut through chains or I'm not in threat of what being uh, crucified to the, the doors of the church, which quite literally has happened in the history of the church. Uh, all those things, the very fact that I'm not experiencing that, uh, boy, what a gift. Uh, yeah. That raises gratitude. What a gift we have. It, it's not even just sort of a chance to lean into my pessimism because like if you plan for the worst, you're always pleasantly surprised. But like, right. honestly, it's, it's a chance to reflect upon God's providence apart from your idolatry, um, which which might be important. Because like whenever I think of providence, what I mean is it's God's job to give me the things I really want. Um, and, and I completely neglect all that he's already done for me. Um, and it's not just sort of an attitude of, of sort of ungratefulness that, that that goes through. But but really the thing that, that starts to fester is you, you only build up the things that you don't have to the idea that they if you just had that, then all your problems would be solved when in reality like it, it's a chance to look at the fact that that the word is being preached you already have all that is needed um and even while that happens the word is being preached with a whole lot of convenience like you're listening to this as a podcast which means you didn't have to drive to hear it like you just got to put it on wherever you're already going when you go to church not only is it safe but it's warm um it's we in my my very first call it was a very small church in Nebraska. Um, 
and uh, the, the furnace broke. Um, and like, it was just what it sold. We, 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 we brought in a space heater and it was cold and it was inconvenient, but the word was preached. Sacraments were administered. The people received the gifts and, and God be praised for it. Um, when, when we got the furnace fixed, I was, I was thankful, but we, we mark convenience as necessity. Uh, and we mark, uh, we mark our wants as, as idols and it's good chance to, to sort of pause and, and take, take stock of what God is actually promising to do in Advent and what he's, he's calling us to be thankful for when he calls us to be thankful. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've i been reading, uh, just for the heck of it, right, the the Russian Civil War and watching some of the calamities that happened during that time. And, oh, just cheerful stuff, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful stuff. Um, But anyway, lo- long story short, you know, we live in a time and age where uh, the U.S. government, to a certain extent, has uh, maybe stopped or pulled back at least uh, in, in its support of, let's just say it this way, of propping the church up. You know, with the church has had a kind of a lush um, history of having a ton of support from the U.S. government uh, in the past. And, and we're maybe seeing that uh, diminish to a certain extent, which can then bring about this idea that, oh, my goodness, we're being persecuted or, you know, the government's against us and so forth. Now, I don't want to diminish that, that that, that is not you know, it's not necessarily good that that's happening. And there is in some cases where the government is against the church. But for the most part, if the government is leaving the church alone, uh, leaving us Christians alone so we can live a quiet and peaceable life, uh, then God be praised. Uh, God be praised that we're free from overt corruption. God be praised that we're free from, um, again, being persecuted uh, for the faith. I mean, like real persecution. Uh, God be praised that we can go to our churches, uh, sit in padded pews with a nice heat or um, air conditioner, with an audio system to hear the pastor preach, and also to what? Be next to our brothers and sisters and not have what? You know, the threat of being what? Violence in our churches. God be praised. Uh, Boy, there's so much to be thankful for. The very fact that we can take our cell phones up and read the Bible whenever we want. The very fact that we can go home to our houses and, uh, man, we we can have our catechisms there. We can have our hymns there. We can pray. Uh, All these things are just such tremendous gifts. And, again, I'm not trying to diminish the fact that there is always a threat to the church, always a threat to the church. But, nonetheless, right now there's so much to be thankful for. You're pointing something out, though, that I think I just don't want to see because you you, you gave me a lot of, of great blessings that I surely don't take advantage of. I, I, I can just go home and read the Bible, but I haven't yet today. Um, right. If, if there are no we, problems yeah. on the outside. Yeah, the yeah. problem is actually me. I need a problem outside of myself because I don't want to blame me for that Right and right and so we have all these gifts and then and then and not only do we not recognize it because I mean this is an epiphany for myself I'm like realizing just how mm. spoiled I am as a pastor and woe is me you know it's like uh, man you know just woe is me I, that this this inconvenience that happened to me but I, I'm getting paid to preach the gospel I mean, just think about that I get I get paid I actually get life mm. insurance and health insurance and a pension uh, they they give the church gives me a study to put all these bo- books behind me. Um, you know, and I, and I get, I get mileage to drive in my vehicle when I go visit some in the hospital, I get paid for mileage for that. I mean, it's just, it's just mind blowing all these, these gifts. But then, but then the problem is that we, we assume it and we don't recognize it, all these gifts that we have been given. And then it just, man, at least our narcissism and our own, uh, entitlement comes out. And it's just, it's just even embarrassing. Like right now talking with you on this, I'm like, I'm just, so we should just shut it down and say, God no, have mercy I'm on humbled. us, right? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, no. Actually, I'm humbled in this moment. And, and you know, yeah, thank you God, for it. God, but just all the gifts that we've been given. I mean, it's it's, it's like we're, we're talking about here before. The very fact that we don't have a bomb dropped on us. The very fact that we're not being persecuted. We're not being nailed to the doors of the church. The very fact that I can go out to Walmart and buy some milk and I can talk about Jesus with a complete stranger and I'm not being punched in the face. Uh, or my tires are not slashed in the parking lot because I'm a pastor. Um, man, we're just, we're, we're, we're really, you know, Harrison, we're really, God be praised, really, really blessed right now. And if things get worse, guess what? We're still blessed because at the very end of the day, uh, if, if, if absolutely all chaos breaks out, um, nothing from this world, even the devil himself cannot snatch us out of the Lord's hand, uh, that we're still promised that salvation in Christ and that assurance. And so no matter how bad it gets, we still have the gift of, of Christ. And then everything else is just gravy, right? Speaking of turkey, mm-hmm. right? Gravy. It's just gravy. It's just, uh, I like it. <laughs> it's it's uh it's uh, these added blessings. Nice, Pastor. Thanks for the hope. That was uh, I needed it. Appreciate yeah. you. Wow, uh, we're blessed, right? God be praised. Amen. I'll talk to you later. Yep, you too.